Hello lovelies, it's Monday, April the 3rd, and today is Yellow Galactic Sun Day. I'm having one of those days today where it feels like Mercury retrograde already. I don't know if it's been the same for you. I've made some notes, and I've, again, I've just been full on mad busy about stuff. Uh, big shifts happening at the moment. So let's go and see how far I can get. Okay, so today we are on yellow galactic sun, which means we have completed the third row of 20 days and we're integrating the previous yellow sun wave spell, which Again, we were in the red castle. So the first 52 days is the, the castle of the dragon. And tomorrow we go into the gateway day, which will be red solar dragon, which means this is the 61st day. So we've done 60 days since we began on the 3rd of February. So by now, we've already got the information around our survival issues and how we have creative coping mechanisms in order to survive. A little bit more about that in a moment. So basically we started this refinement process eight days ago in Red Skywalker. And so we're now starting to take action with Mars and Cancer driven by our emotional issues, our triggers. <laughs> If we are working in a transformative way and an evolutionary way as an individual, as a Skywalker who's doing the work, who's making the shift, the 13th sign. And so we're recognizing how we're still running these survival patterns from our ancestors. And they're huge at the moment because of everything that's happening. And on the flip side of that, everything needs to be happening in order for this process to happen because it needs to shake us out it, the universe, the people in it need to shake us out of our disassociation, out of our survival and recognize why are we in this survival mode because the same patterns are running now that have been running for thousands of years around inappropriate out of balance relationship and this does take a lot of work for the human being to start to make a big shift okay so today we are also in let me just check We're in moon nine, day 28. Yeah, so we're in the very last day of red solar moon, which is the gateway. So red solar moon is in the first 13 day process. It's there and because it's the number nine, it's the very first number nine in the sequence in the red castle, in red dragon. So every nine is the same color as the initiating wave spell. Okay, so when it's a red, it's a red. When it's a white, it's a white and so on. So it's taking us through a process and this goes very deep. So red solar moon, again, is the 28 day cycles that we work with Beginning on the 26th of July every year, we begin with red magnetic moon in Leo energy, the heart coming in, into authenticity. We can only truly have authentic, intimate relationships if we can have honesty. And most people can't do honesty right now because it hurts, it's dangerous. 
to be truthful in some situations, you know, it can mean you lose your house, your job, your home, etc. This has been going on for a very long time. So we're now going through a gateway in the last 28 days of seeing how we are able to be authentic, authentic and being the beacon of light and where we are not. And this is, again, is really important because where we are not is what shows us what needs to change for us as a human being and start moving towards situations and relationships where we can feel that we can be our true selves, if we know what that is, of course, because that's, that's tricky in itself. Okay, so I'm just gonna refer to my notes. So tomorrow, we go into a big number four as we go into the gateway. So we're going into the fourth 20 day process, which takes us from red solar dragon down to yellow lunar sun, which is going to be revealing our emotional process. And it is all about the emotional process. So yesterday, for example, we were in blue resonant storm. And again, what was resonating, what was pushing our triggers, what was taking us into emotional overwhelm, that's the key. So in the next 20 days, as we're coming up to this full moon, which is gonna be on white planetary wind, so the day after, in Libra, which is all about the balance, the shadow story, what pisses us off, because it's related to the bladder meridian, and um, how our bladder regulates our blood pressure as well, because when we're feeling stressed, we tend to go to the loo quite a lot, and any diuretics make us go to the loo, so they help balance our system again. So it is like, you know, an energetic system that we've got going. It's like a central heating system with radiators and pressure. And, you know, so things flare up and things start to move around. And then as soon as we can let them out, pressure starts to come down. And again, it's the same as a storm. It's the same pattern in that way as well. So, you know, it's all the micro and the macro patterns going on. So red planetary moon is, we're gonna see over the next 28 days, beginning tomorrow, what is manifest for us. Um, this energy is the 28 day period that begins every year on the 4th of April for 28 days. It starts in Aries, new beginnings, and it ends in Taurus, what is manifest. And in this spiral, it's, as I said, the fourth 20-day process where we focus on becoming free of codependency and we go through the gateway of the previous 52-day cycle of Red Dragon. So we've got the information now, we're refining it, we know what pushes our buttons, what doesn't feel safe. And because Red Dragon is ruled by Neptune, it also shows us where we have learned, often from our family as well in our culture, how to disassociate, how to not feel things, how to put a brave face on things to keep us emotionally safe for the sake of our mental preservation, if you like, and um, so we might have delusions and illusions that we develop. So we don't want to see the truth. We don't want to see reality. We're in denial. And as anybody knows who goes through a process of ridding themselves of addictions like alcohol, cannabis, sugar, tea, coffee, um, all of these foods have chemicals in them. And so... When we're ready to see, when we're ready to grow up and become emotionally resistant to life, 
as in maybe resistant is the wrong word, um, to become centered, to achieve maturity, to be able to cope. Some people can't do that because their brains aren't wired that way. And so people on the autism spectrum, for example, people with certain patterns of ADHD, for example, um, it's virtually impossible for them to do that in a regular automatic way because their brains aren't wired like that. So it takes lots of working through skills training, changing thoughts, what we call cognitive behavior therapy in some ways. So meditation can help, earthing can help, grounding techniques, coming back into your body when your mind is taking you all over the place, learning how to focus, learning how to not overstimulate yourself. And remembering that we are in a hologram and we are doing it to ourselves on one level. So um, again, that can be an ab abstract intellectual understanding as well. And this is key to embodiment. So it's taking it to a deeper level. It's okay, how am I reacting to a situation that is making me feel extremely stressed? And what do I need to do about that for myself? Okay, so disassociation is a very big way of coming out of our body, not being present. Um, again, doing research on this is really good. So if you haven't yet done that, check that out. You know, why do we do that? Um, that's a, a really big breakthrough gateway. Point. Why do I do the things that I do to avoid being stressed, sad, angry? And often it's because we're in situations where we can't actually change the situation. So it could be that we're in a job that we need uh, to keep a roof over our head. It could be the family that we're in that, you know, everybody has unhealthy ways of living and whenever we try and broach the subject you know we just get gaslit scapegoated etc and it's just recognizing all of that and not giving up that's the most important thing do not give up at this point so we've got libra moon is coming up and libra is all about the shadow it's about coming into balance it's about weighing things up it's about fairness it's Arcturian energy. It's about doing this work on the inside, the lover's card, so that we become balanced in our masculine and feminine and that we become a mature human being on the inside and that we work with our emotional fragility. You know, if we're sensitive, we do things to try and minimise our exposure to things that are hurtful. And again, I know that's not easy right now. Um, making shifts around food, who we hang out with, toxic relationship is really key. But this is an essential step. There's no avoiding this. There's no running off to be in a cave at this time on planet Earth um, because we chose to come here at this time in order to understand this in order to evolve it. Okay, so sorry, I just got an interruption there. So I've lost my thread a bit, but let's see if we can get it back. So we've got the, the full moon coming up on the day after tomorrow. So we're gonna be seeing what's manifest. Are we embodying our spirits? Are we speaking truth from that place yet? Are we in a position to do that? And you know, this is huge that we're moving towards new ways of being and everything that's happening now is pushing us towards that. So the cards for today are Yellow Warrior, which is the number 16 Mayan sign. And so that's the tower. And this is the heart path that we are on and the planet for that is Saturn. And Saturn is of course in Pisces, having my second Saturn return. 
And so a bigger picture of Saturn in Pisces is creating the dream that comes from spirit. Okay, so the cards that I got today, are Queen of Wands. So again, sovereignty and fire burn off the old stories. Ace of Cups, empty your cup. Aquarius in a way, you know, where we are letting go of these emotional triggers so that we can be clearer and we're not stuck in the old story. The Nine of Swords, thoughts of cruelty. And gateways going beyond that, you know, how have you been treated cruelly in the past? Because some people are very cruel and they're working on a very low base level. Uh, they've got all sorts of mental health disorders. And again, when I'm talking about researching this, you can see that some people um, in the di diagnostic manual in psychology, uh, they don't have an ability to have empathy. They don't have a theory of mind to use a technical term, they, they simply cannot process how other people are or think. And so they're at a very limited developmental stage of being able to do healthy, joyful, loving relationship. And it's just the way it is. We aren't gonna change that because we can't rewire their brain. Okay, so <laughs> they don't want to rewire their brain and, you know, this. This all comes from trauma over centuries. So just understanding that can give you a big aha moment. And so uh, forums that I have been on around these threads really helped me understand so much. And although it's challenging a lot of the time um, to read other people's stories that they're going through hell on earth, course, this is a 52 day process of creating heaven on earth by recognizing what has created hell for us and our ancestors and then doing something about it on an inner level so that we can make a shift. And this is where this card comes in. Okay, so we are the magician, we are here to change our inner workings, change our behavior, change our emotional stability. And it doesn't mean becoming a hard person in any way, shape or form. In fact, the paradox is that you become a lot more compassionate for anybody in whatever position they are operating from right now, because you know this has come from a place often that they don't have personal awareness of. And if they're operating these extreme mental illness um, patterns, they, have, they simply do not have that awareness often to make any changes. And we're going to be dealing with echoes around that as well. And so I'm just going to read you the Libra moon because this is a really lovely degree that's coming up. At the moment, we have got the moon in Virgo, by the way, and it's at 15 degrees. And I'm just checking that out because this is um, linked into a lot of my energy. So you can use that in a way of highlighting what you've got in the moon code and where it is. And I've got Pluto in Virgo and so has my generation. And I've also got Uranus in Virgo. And, and this is big right now as well. Let's go to Libra. The lower half, a woman, sorry, the lower half of her body is a serpent. Magic working simultaneously from two divergent levels. The regular human everyday magic of holding yourself together as a complex and volatile mix by sheer intent. And the deeper magic of yielding into the undersoul, the passions, the desires, the impulses, and the skills of the subconscious levels, primarily being absorbed in the deep forces of body and soul, but meanwhile, bending over backwards to frame everything in normalcy. This combination is extremely difficult to maintain. It's fragile, delicate, and dangerous. You secretly exult in how impossible it really is and urge yourself onward to work this magic 
and wield it with the same kind of life force that moves at the edge of an abyss and stays on that edge in a balancing act that may capsize at any moment. And it therefore is entered upon with a passion of the most dazzling cross between sheer foolishness and a wizard's mastery. How fantastic is that? Okay, so that's the energy that we're working towards. And of course, we've got another Aries new moon coming up with a solar eclipse at 29 degrees Aries later on in the month. Uh, just before it goes into Taurus. So I'm not going to talk about that right now because I don't have time. <laughs> um, but here we go. So remember, with this Red Skywalker, we're working towards Red Cosmic Serpent. Where's it gone? There it is. So we're going from how do I, as a Skywalker, take action now to refine what was happening in the previous 52 day cycle how do i start to create heaven on earth for myself and often this means a radical departure from what we've done before doesn't it because you know we carry on doing the same old thing we're going to get the same results now red serpent is the fifth mind sign it's the overtone it's the mastery of relationship to ourselves. It's Kundalini, it's what gets on our nerves. It's a nervous system. It's also the asteroid belt and new consciousness coming in. So we're moving towards this now. We're moving towards making this shift about, about relationship. Again, you come up with codes. Who is a red serpent in your family constellation, friend constellation? Who are they? How do you relate to them? who's a red skywalker so for me red skywalker is my grandmother on my maternal side and red serpent is my mum and so how this is interlinked and every time i say this out loud i make new connections so that's that's really great and the devil is in the detail as well so looking at the detail looking at what's showing up for us Again, yellow warrior is twinned with hang on, just having a senior moment. Is twinned with blue knight. Sorry about that. Blue knight also coming up uh, where we've got what needs to go in this cycle. So over the past, up to now, we've got eight days. What needs to go? That feels like the nightmare that you're repeating it again, that you're still in it and it's like, oh, I'm still doing it again. And of course it does take time to shift these things. You know, if we manage to make huge shifts in this lifetime, fantastic, because next lifetime we'll be in a whole different place. And uh, we've got everything aligned with it to do that. Also, our uh, red serpent is connected to white wizard. And that's the 13 year cycle that we're in. And we've also got uh, red dragon is twinned with white mirror, which was going back to day six, a portal of this wave spell. So again, what you saw a couple of days ago so on Saturday if it was your birthday on Saturday this is going to be your whole year as well what was bringing you into balance around your shadow story what was coming up for you um that again there's delusions there's illusions going on there's something that your mind wants to project onto the world and that could be you know running a past fear story it could also be in denial of you think that you're going to make something happen and you, you, there's no possible way that you can do it. And uh, that's a familiar one for me. And I think for a lot of women where we are spinning so many plates and we're looking after so many people and we're, you know, trying to do all these things and we're, we're just getting burned out because we're not meant to be doing that anymore. 
people have to stand on their own two feet wherever possible and connect to their source energy and stop doing behaviors that create hell for them either now or in the future because a lot of programs that are running around health and well-being are the opposite of that and so we need to be making these big shifts and changing patterns of not only our lifetime but our ancestors lifetime so lots of love to you and I hope you're having an amazing Skywalker time and just remember that you came here at this time to do this process and you can absolutely do it. So just let's do it. Bye for now.